evening ladies and gentlemen, my name is Josh Kamiti. Today we are going to look at uh, uh, how to determine or how to plot the bending moment and the shear force diagrams for a cantilever. Now in this case, we are given a cantilever here. Now remember, a cantilever is a beam that is fixed on one end and free on the other end. So in this case, our cantilever here is fixed at point uh, B but at point A it is free at point A. So in other words we can say that it is an overhanging beam. An example of a cantilever is like um, a balcony. Remember a balcony is usually fixed on the wall but on the other end it is not supported. It is uh, that is overhanging on the other end. Therefore our question for today is draw the shear force and the bending moment diagrams for the cantilever loaded as shown in this figure here. So the cantilever that we are given here, we are given a cantilever that is fixed at point B and at point A it is loaded with a 1 kN point load. Then between point C and D it is carrying a uniformly distributed load of 2 kN per meter at a span of 2 meters. Then between point D and E, it is uh, free, not carrying any load. But at point E, our cantilever is loaded with a point load of 1 kN. So, the first thing to do is uh, to determine the shear force, the shear forces. So, we are going to have a uh, shear force calculations, SF calculations. So we have the shear force calculations there. Now, uh, when you look at our cantilever, at point A, we have a load of a point load of one kilonewton or a concentrated load of one kilonewton. Then between point A and C, our cantilever is free, not carrying any load. Therefore, we are going to have the shear force between point A and point C being negative one kilonewton. Remember. Shear force is the sum of all the forces acting on one or either side of a given point. So the shear force between uh, point A and C is negative 1 kilo newton. Then between point C and D, our cantilever is carrying a uniformly distributed load of 2 kilo newtons per meter. Therefore, we are going to have this shear force between point C and D will change uniformly from negative 1 kilo newtons that is the shear force between point A and C to when you look at a uh, the UDL between point C and D, it is a UDL of uh, a value 2 kN per meter at a span of 2 meters. Therefore, if we convert this UDL to point load, we are going to have negative 2 kN per meter times 2 meters, which is going to give us negative 4 kN. Therefore, the shear force between point C and D will change uniformly from negative 1 kN to negative 4 kilonewtons. That is how uh, the shear force will change between point C and D. Then from there, we go to shear force at point D. At. We have the shear force between and shear force at a given point. Therefore, the shear force at point D is going to be negative 4 kilonewtons. Negative. It's going to be negative 1 kilonewtons. That is the shear force between A and C plus negative 4 kilo newtons, which is the change in shear force between C and D. And this is going to give us negative 5 kilo newtons. That is the shear force at point D. Then from there, we go to shear force between D and uh, E. So the shear force between D and E is going to be this negative 5 because it is the only uh, value 
of shear force that we have on the right hand side of the point between D and E. Then from there we go to shear force between point E and B, which is going to be this negative 5 kN plus negative 1 kN, which is the concentrated load at point E. So negative 5 plus negative 1, which is going to be negative 6 kN. So that is how we determine the value of the shear forces acting at different points on our cantilever. Then from there, our next move will be plotting the shear force diagram. Now, how do we plot the shear force diagram? First of all, we are going to have that line that separates the positive and the negative. Remember, the positive shear forces will appear above this line and the negative shear forces will appear below this line. Now, the shear force between point A and point C is negative 1 kN. So, if we just approximate uh, 1 unit to be at that point, at C again, 1 unit to be at that point, so that will serve us well. So, this is 1 kN, and here we got another 1 kN. So, that is the shear force between point A and point C. Then from there, the shear force between C and D is changing uniformly from negative 1 to negative 4 kN. So, the shear force will change. Remember, a change will uh, be represented by a slope or a, a sloping line in that case. So, uh, if we... Uh, this one is a uh, 1 unit. Let's assume that 4 units will be up to that point. So, we are going to connect this uh, 1 uh, kN at C to this 4 kN all the way up to that point. So, we are going to have 4 kN in that case. Then from there, we have shear force at point D, which is negative 5 kN. Now, since this is, this is uh, 4 kN, we are only going to drop 1 unit down so that we can have 5. So, that will give us 5 kN. Then the shear force between D and E, again, it is negative 5 kN. So, we just connect this negative 5 all the way to point E. So that is uh, another 5 kN in this case, right there, 5 kN. Then the shear force between point E and B is negative 6 kN. So from E to B, uh, at E we have, uh, we have a negative 6 kN. So this is negative 5. We just drop 1 unit down to have negative 6 kN. So 1 unit down and then at uh, B again, we have 6 units down. So since this is uh, 6 uh, kN at E, we just connect it straight all the way to B. So this is going to be 6 kN as well as at this point 6 kN. And then we drop in that form. So this is now going to be our shear force diagram. So we write down there S, F, D to stand for shear force diagram. Then, don't uh, forget that our shear force diagram is negative because it is appearing on the lower side of this line. All these shear forces have got a negative uh, uh, value, but we don't write the negative on the shear force. We write the negative inside the SFD. Then finally, we can shade off uh, our lines so that they become very much visible. So we shape them off in that form so that we can have now a complete visible shear force diagram. And that is our shear force diagram, as simple as that. Then from there, we go to bending moment calculations. Now, for the bending moment calculation, remember, Bending moment is given by force times the distance. So thank you for watching. Uh, for more and more structural engineering videos, please remember to hit the subscription button. After hitting the subscription uh, button, click 
the notification button and you will be the first person to be notified every time we upload a video. Thank you. See you in our next lesson.